Thank you very much for taking time out of your busy lives to come here tonight. I'm, I'm Jimmy Recor, I'm your host, and I'm your moderator tonight. I would just like to point out that for the number of people here, there are least amount of checks on things I've ever seen in my life doing this. So the, the three articles that have the most checks only have three on them. So I am asking if anybody came in and read stuff and didn't mark, if there's something you want to mark, I'll give you a couple of minutes. And if you could mark that, that might point us in a little bit of a better direction. I see the Poland Road group is here in force. <laughs> And if not, we're going to start in a minute. One minute. Okay. The way the pre-town meeting works is the warrant is plastered all over the walls here. You need to look at those warrant articles. And if you have a question on one, want to talk about one, you come in, all the yarn with the markers on the end mean that's for you to check off that if you check it off and it becomes one of the top three with checks in numbers those are the first three articles we talk about if we have time so i'll give you a couple more minutes and it takes a little bit away from debate but the way it looks now I'm not feeling that there's going to be a lot of badness here tonight, and I honestly, I honestly hope there's not a lot of badness here tonight because this is designed to make you go to town meeting and be a little more informed and a little more educated as to what's going to happen there. That's the whole purpose of this. and. The great desserts are the other purpose of this, apparently, for a lot of the people here. Ruth? As a partner in this enterprise, I would say, for the people who have already put check marks on, since we don't have very many, if your most favorite article needs a few more check marks, go put it up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the Mayor Daly approach. <laughs> Vote early, vote often. I'd like to know, while, while I'm giving people time, I'd like to know two other things. First of all, this is the first of these in our lives that Mary McClintock was not at. Mary McClintock, Ruth, and I started this, I don't even know how many years ago. More than 10. Yes. More than 15. Really? All right. No wonder I'm old. But anyway, she's feeling under the weather and has for a few days and could not be here tonight. And I told Ruth Fish when she first got here, this is like marching along march with only one boot on. Because Mary's always been our third wheel. So it's a little interesting. The other thing I'd like to note is it might be a little more civil tonight because for the first time in most of our lives, anybody who's been here before, Malcolm Kors is missing. <laughs> and I miss Malcolm because Malcolm always asked the question most of us wanted to ask, but were afraid to. And Malcolm had no filter. <laughs> and a few years ago, honest to God, a few years ago, Malcolm came here, and none of us knew that at the time, but his oldest son was in the last parts of his life, was having a tough time. Malcolm came in and s some group here pissed him off. And he got up to leave in a rage, but he was not mad enough to not stop by the desserts on the way out. And he took some desserts and left, which I found one of the most hilarious things in my life. So. I'm looking, there's not a lot, I've got a couple people, with those people I will take one more check, quick check, and then we'll go. Is that all right with everybody? Okay. You want to throw me out, I can go home. Okay.
Okay, everybody, I would like to get this show going. Once again, I'm going to say thank you very much for taking time out of your busy lives to come here. Just a uh, couple of rules as we're going through this. We will treat each other and like the rest of the world with respect. No personal attacks. That'll get you a ticket out. We love this place. We're all happy to be here. Let's, that, let's let that rule the evening. Here, here. Okay. So the uh, article of uh, these articles that gained the most checks was article number six. Article number six states, to see if the town will vote to appropriate $311,000 to construct an addition to the public safety building and to meet said appropriation. The town shall transfer $311,000 from the Highway Maintenance Building Special Article, account number 00142258851, to a public safety building addition fund or take any action relative thereto. Would anybody like to speak to that article? Anybody from public buildings committee? Sorry. Anybody. <laughs> Without that, I'll open the floor. So, Jimmy, I'll, I'll say a little bit. Please. Um, so that money is, and correct me if I'm wrong, Bernie, or, uh, um, that money was left over. That was a savings. We part of the savings that we had by constructing this other building by utilizing the Franklin County Tech School to do a lot of the electrical and the mechanical work. We saved ourselves, I don't have the exact numbers, almost half a million dollars, I believe. So that's a portion of that money that we would like to use to fix up and utilize the other building, the old highway garage, rather than have to raise and appropriate from taxation. We've already got that money left over in an account, we would use that to improve that building. And just what's the total project cost? We don't have the total yet. We've only got estimates. We don't have a firm opinion. If you're talking about taking some sale of land money and some yeah. ARPA money, what, do you have an idea what that total is? We have the, the It's just the shy estimate. of 800000 altogether. The select board has obligated the remainder of the ARPA funds, which is just shy of 400000 So with the 82000 from the sale of public lands and the 311000 it's just shy of 800000 And the whole idea is to do this without any additional assessment to the town residents. This is all money that's already accounted for. Uh, the, so it's just basically getting a public safety building without having to pay anything more. Yeah. Okay. I should also just point out that there will be a public forum on Thursday to discuss all of this just about the public building, mm -hmm. public safety building. So we can certainly go into more depth there and you'll see all the plans and everything. So yeah, please please attend Thursday night. We can go over the building. You can see what we're talking about doing to improve it. So please attend that over the Okay. It is this slight fact has just occurred to me that I know everybody who's speaking, mm -hmm. but there are some people here, friends of mine, new friends of mine, who may not know who everybody is. So from this point forward, if you're going to speak and I recognize you, I'd like you to state who you are, what title you hold, if you hold a title, so those people who don't know, know who you are. I think it's just fair. Okay. Sure. Sir. So I'm Thad Bennett. I live on Children's Falls Road. I've been here since 2017. I don't know where the public safety building is. Thank God for that. Um, usually I'm surprised. We usually talk about this for two or three years before we actually allocate money. This sounds like, oh my God, we're going to do something. Can somebody bring a newcomer up to date? Where is it and why do we need to do something with it? 
<laughs> Good question. Ken? Bob Armstrong. I'm Bob Armstrong. I used to be a selectman. Uh, I think I'm still the chair of the Broadband Committee. I think I'm on the Capital Improvements Committee. Uh, I'm getting them off as fast as I can find people to take my place. Uh, and it's, you know, having wonderful young guys take it over. Uh, but when I moved here at Conway in 1980, which doesn't seem like that long ago, I remember noticing this building that we're talking about, the, the future. The, the future public building, and say, okay, well, there's the old town garage, but I wonder where the new town garage is. <laughs> and it was a year of driving around Conway, wondering where do we store all the fire trucks and ambulance vehicles. And then I learned that's the town garage. And that was in 1980, and that's still the town garage. And so it's that building that we're talking about. I know you've driven by it a lot of times, but if you drive to Ashfield, right across the street from Orchard Equipment, is the town garage. I'm sure you've seen old it. Town the, the old town garage. The old town, 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 town garage. garage. <laughs> yeah, the old town garage. Not the new, the old town garage. And that's the building we're talking about. Okay. And we're going to expand it. And uh, and I'm not part of this committee, but but I but I just always chuckled to myself over what I thought of that building in 1980. It didn't look, I think it looked a little worse then than it does now, we've taken care of it. But uh, that's the building, and I, I know you know where it is. Thank you. I can add just a little more. I was a selectman for 24 years. But in 1984, I got on the select board, and we started talking about a new highway garage. I think it had been talked about probably before I was a selectman, but what we did do is we put a new peak roof on it while I was a selectman. It had a flat roof, and we wanted to insulate it. That was after the oil embargoes and things like that. And they said, well, if you put insulation in, the roof will collapse because it won't be able to handle the snow load. So we put that crazy peak roof on it and put insulation on it. And we started working on a new highway garage, which finally after, what, 35 years, Ken was on one of my committees at one point, or I think he was the chair of it. So it's taken, you're right, it's taken us like 40 years to build the highway garage. And the, I think the intent now, and I don't want to speak for the committee, is to consider repurposing that as a public safety company. It looks like there's enough of a building there that it's worth investigating whether we should fix it up and keep it as a public safety company. That, did I do a half decent yeah. job? Or? Peter? Yeah. Uh, Peter Jeswald, I'm on the committee. I moved here in 1971. <laughs> talking about dates. I might have the white okay. date out there. You get the, you get the old time. Um, so so now, that the, now that the, the highway garage and all the equipment is in the new building, we're going to give a home for Bob Baker's crew <laughs> so they can have three bays dedicated to the fire trucks. One bay of the old building will be an ambulance, and one bay will be for the police officers. And then on the building, we're going to, uh, onto that building, we're adding a, a 38 by 22 square foot, 20, as big as we could possibly fit on that site, given all the restrictions we have with wetlands and the road and, and all that. So there will be offices in that building, an office for the, the uh, police chief, an office for the police officers, one for the emergency uh, uh, emergency crew and one for the fire department. There'll be a common space and bathrooms and showers. And, and so that's what's going on. And come to the Thursday night, is uh, Bernie, come, come to that meeting and you'll see the plans. And we developed, we've hired, we developed them over this last winter and then hired a, a designer and an engineer. Uh, the designer tweaked our design a little bit. Um, and uh, so with the progress, you'll see our survey we did showing the topography and what the new site plan will look like. Thanks. Yep. Nelson? Nelson, Shiflet, Shiflet, Falls Road. Um, how did you arrive at the rough estimate of $800,000? Uh, we, when we meeting with the designer and the engineer, we took the square foot of the building, multiplied it by a, a reasonable square foot price for that kind of construction and came up with the ballpark. And once the, uh, as you know, they've been in the business a long time, 
you cannot get a hard number until you have specs, the plans, and, and, and all that. So they're developing those under very can talk about where the funds are coming from to, to do that, the higher data and that's ARPA. Well, oh, that's ARPA as well. Yeah. And, and so, Bill uh, Canner, I'm the current chair of the Highway Select Board, also elected to the Highway School Committee and the Frontier School Committee. Can't hear you. Uh, okay, I am Philip Cantor. I am the current chair of the Conway Select Board, mm -hmm. also elected to the Conway Grammar School Committee and the Frontier School Committee. The the timing that Thad mentioned, ARPA, it really is that was the driver of this because ARPA is a use it or lose it, and we're not giving back the federal government four hundred thousand dollars. So uh, so the, we really. The, what, what, when the time frame, that, you know, we had like a year to obligate it to, in some fashion, and we didn't want to see it dissipated like so many of our neighboring towns have. And we know we knew that that building really, really needed to be made better. Um, and so the, 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 this was the, the, the committee that is doing this great work, the Peter Deswalt and Walter Goodrich and, uh, and uh, Kenny and Ron Sweet and Bob Baker uh, and Ron Eakin, um, we, that was the highway facility, uh, and, and they agreed to reconstitute for this building, um, and that's that allowed the time frame to come together, and we're able to obligate this money, and that was key to being able to do it without tax money. Thank you. Anybody else? Young lady in the back. <laughs> Thank you, Jimmy. <laughs> State Representative Natalie Blake here. I was just wondering if you could tell us well, the bathrooms in the new facilities have four. Amen, four. Amen <laughs> sister. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know to what that's referring to. <laughs> but there aren't any. But I, I'm actually, they hired me to put a curtain up, and I, and I stayed. <laughs> Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Natalie, what did Kim Driscoll make of that? <laughs> it was very, it was, we, we gave a tour of Conway and Ashfield's public safety facilities. And to see the chairman of the public safety committee and the auditor walk into that facility <laughs> and wonder where the fourth wall <laughs> was. It was great that you had a toilet, you had a sink, but we could have really used a wall. <laughs> That's how I earned my money. You know? <laughs> Anybody else on this? Okay. I'm going to close discussion on this. Between this and the next article, I'm going to ask for anybody who's running for office or their representative who'd like to speak to speak now. Have any takers? Yes. Okay. Hi, I'm Beth Gerson. I'm not here as the chair of the planning board, but I am the current chair of the planning board. And while I have one minute, I'm just going to say there are two openings for the planning board. We have no one running. <laughs> we have no one currently running in the town election. But if you're interested, there's another way to get on the planning board, and you can talk to any of the planning board representatives about that and um, later. Um, I'm just here to speak for one moment about George, for George Forcier for the Board of Assessors. There's some flyers I have here at my, at my table. Um, George has lived in town for 40 years. He lives on Baptist Hill Road. For anyone who's aware, he's one of the best haunted house designers in the entire world. But that wouldn't, that's not what would make him a really good uh, member of the Board of Assessors. What would make him a really good member is that he has a, a, an excellent skill set for this work. He was a journalist for a long time. His attention to detail is amazing. He's a great analyst and organizer. I can attest to this because, <clears throat> sorry, I've been working with him on the planning board for the last year. Um, and he uh, also is a licensed real estate agent, so he knows a lot about the entire world of real estate. He's a, he's a, he's a teacher. He's taught journalism at UMass. He's uh, for 30 years. For many years, yeah. yeah, many years. He's a man of many talents and a lot of humbleness, actually. Um, and not to mention best haunted house in the world. Um, and uh, he's also uh, currently 
Um, he was also on the Conway uh, Grammar School uh, committee long ago when we built this building. Um, and uh, he'd be a great, great asset in that way. If anybody wants a flyer, I have them over here. Here's Lori. No, I just hit you. Oh. Lori here, not Lori. Thank you. Um, just on the heels of what Beth said about the planning board, the Board of Health also has two positions that are coming open. We have two people that their terms are out and they have chosen not to rerun. So if anyone has any interest in serving on the Board of Health or learning about it or know someone who might, please, you know, get your name out there and get on that ballot as a write-in or come see us. Anybody else? Okay, I'm going to take the, this second to say this for the first time. You're going to hear it a lot in the next few weeks, I'm sure. But Kenny Womack, our chief of police for 25 years? 33. 33 years. <laughs> but who's counting? Who's counting? Yo, who's counting? <laughs> He's going to retire in a month. This man has been a wonderful asset to this town. And I'm saying this as a good friend. We've known each other our whole lives. This guy has been, yeah, you have no idea. Because he's such a good chief, you have no idea. You hear no rumors. You hear no slack. Kenny's always been above board. And he's always been a community-oriented chief. To the point of 1997, when I was president of the Sportsman's Club, we got together. And we started the youth day that the first one in four years just occurred Sunday again, where kids from the town come to the club, they can fish, they can shoot archery, they can shoot uh, air guns, they can shoot shotguns, they can shoot black powder guns. They can build bird houses. They can build bird houses. <laughs> they usually have Tom Riccardi and the birds of prey there. We do a lot, and we, that's all because of Kenny. And Kenny's been a great chief, and I just want you to understand, the next chief coming in is gonna be a good chief. I've known him all my life, too. But Kenny has been extraordinary, and I hope the people in town realize that. <laughs> next article. Jimmy. Yes. Could we have a recitation of who is running for anything? Oh, Just the I, list. There is only one contested race, and that is the assessors. Okay. Um, other than that, it's pretty much incumbents that are remounting the tracks. Now, if you're here for the first time, and you're thinking about volunteering in some way or running for something, do not be shy. Yes, come and see the town clerk. And as uh, the newest, well, actually not the newest. Oh, but people don't know who you are. Like, oh, Erica um, Fullman, I'm on select board. Um, I was until Chris was elected the newest member of select board. Can I just say that participating in town government is not as bad as people tell you it's going to be. It's, like, it's actually, it's very rewarding and it's not Bad. It's not like it's not an undue burden, and um, yeah. So I encourage anyone who wants to participate in a town committee or to write your name in for, an, you know, a position that's uncontested. Um, please do. Thank you. Anybody else? Next article will be Article 28. Article 28 says to see if the town will vote to authorize the select board to acquire in fee by eminent domain for flood control, public safety, other municipal purposes related to the South River Flood Resiliency Project and other municipal purposes over the following described parcel. The half interest in the property owned by the estate of Mary V. Bay and the half interest in the property owned by the Salvation Army for a total sum of the appraised price of $4,700, the property being located at number zero, Shelburne Falls Road, Assessor's Tax Map 410 Lot 26.6, 
and consisting of 1.36 acres more or less or to take any other action relative, relative thereto. Could you read the next sentence though which is really important? Both parties have stated in writing that this is their preferred method for transfer of property ownership to the town. And this article needs a two-third majority vote. Please. <laughs> um, actually, I'm sorry, oh. Karen E. Blanchard, Thank you. Uh, 86 River Street, this year in 2017. Uh, <laughs> no, no. Wait. Um, yeah, so um, this has actually been in the works for a couple of years. The original article, and Janet would know more about the background for that one with the MVP grant that got approved just as I came on board. Um, but the, the town meeting had approved in 21 to purchase three properties. So far, this is the only one that I'm getting close to actually closing in on. But what happened is um, the Bays didn't even know originally that they owned this property. It came down from the Chesros and Jan, correct me if I'm getting it this wrong, but um, so Robert Doc Bay had it but didn't actually know it and then it passed to both Mary and Robert and Robert passed away left everything that he owned to the Salvation Army not knowing that he owned the half interest in this property then Mary Bay passed away so now the estate of Mary Bay is dealing with the other half so I've spoken with the Salvation Army who didn't know that they owned this half interest <laughs> that had come down to them and then um, the estate of Mary Bay and the amount of money it was going to cost them to have to get a, an appraisal and all that kind of stuff to do the legal work just to get the you know just over two thousand um, dollars wasn't worth it so we approached them and said well do you want us to ask the town to take it by eminent domain which would release us to just giving them the actual appraisal amount and they don't have to pay any money to get that so that's literally what this is all about it's just trying to and, and Janet will know more about why we wanted the property in the first place. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Who are you? Who are you? <laughs> Janet Chase. <laughs> uh, this is part of the property where the uh, fire department fills up their trucks. So on Children Falls Road, if you know, along the river. Um, there's a couple of small, small parcels in there that are unbuildable. They're too close to the river. There was once way back a, a, an old cabin there. And uh, so this property has been on the top list of priorities for potential uh, restoration of the road and some flood mitigation work. So that's and improving the hydrant filling. Uh, right, Joe? Yeah. So that's why this is important. And, and uh, I was in, talked with Mary Bay before she died, and she was interested, <coughs> sure, you know, but it's not, they're not able to use it, and neither is her, her estate. Anybody else? I can add just a little more, Joe. Yeah. Um, <coughs> this is all part of what's called MVP, Municipal Long Italy Preparedness Program, and which we've been working on for I think 13 years now. I've been working with Janet and Michelle as members, they're members of the Friends of the South River. I was a selectman and then on the planning board. But we're, we're trying to study the South River. Uh, one of our goals is to try to mitigate flooding of the center of town, and mitigate erosion and siltation of the river. Uh, especially downstream. So these are the priority projects, if you will, that we've identified. There's another article for some money to continue work on above the Main Street Dam. This is work below the dam. So the overall goal is to make the South River more climate friendly, I guess, for lack of a better term. We know that the storms are going to increase as time goes on. And so we're trying to build the term now as resiliency, if you will, in the river trying to solve some of the flooding problems. And this particular area is prone to erosion. It's, the uh, river is moving around, it's meandering. 
in some places is moving closer to the road, so there ultimately will be some bank stabilization work done. As part of that, we would consider putting in a dry hydrant for the fire department. Unfortunately, there's not any deep holes in the river, but we have to figure that out about smurfing over there. <laughs> but I, that's my contribution. Anybody else on this? I'm uh, Celia Van Dreisch, Waitley Road. What is a dry hydrant? Oh, good question. Bob, you want to drive? Robert Baker, Fire Chief. A dry hydrant is a pipe that essentially goes down into the ground below the frost line and goes diagonally out into a water hole. Got it. Okay. Preferably it's somewhere between five and ten feet below the water surface. So that in the winter months or in the summer months. Mostly in the winter months, you can tap on in, pull a suction with your fire truck, suck the water out of the river without having to cut holes in the ice or anything else. Yep. This makes life a lot easier. Thank you, Esther. It's nice to have water. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody else? Okay. Next article up. Wow. You certainly have, Dan. So, just, I'm not even sure who to look who to ask my question to, but, so the, the point of the town owning this chunk of property is so that we can proactively do this flood mitigation. And if it's not owned by us, we can't do anything. Is that right? So we're just, we're like taking some steps to get it so that then we can do the things we want to do, because we can't do them right now. Is that right? Janet and Joe spent decades no, on this. <laughs> there's usually only two ways to do it. Either you own the land or you have to get a, what's called an easement on the property. In this case, it's cheaper and easier and desirable by the people that we just we take the land by okay. eminent domain. Thank you. Okay. Next article is Article 34, and I'm going to need some help with this, I promise you. Article 34, to see if the town will vote to amend its existing zoning bylaws by amending Article 8 as follows. Article 8, wireless telecommunication facilities. Yeah, you want to read the whole thing? Or I don't, I, it's not here for me to read, technically. No. If I flip it over. Yeah, it's way long. It's way long. Maybe we could, rather than reading the whole thing, maybe we could just sort of discuss the the high the highlights of it. Is that acceptable? Because at town meeting, you're going to be able to well, you're going to get the warrant in the mail, and you're going to be able to read it. Anyway, again, I'm Beth Gerchman. I live on Hoosick Road. I'm currently the chair of the planning board. So <clears throat> let me just speak give loudly, you please. speak loudly. Am I too not loud enough? No, you're not. Oh, okay. So um, I have a one-page handout which I didn't make enough of because. Or did you? Did we bring more? I put some out all over. You did. Okay, so they're on the tables, I think. So basically, um, the highlights of this are that we are trying to keep pace with the changes in the telecommunications technology. Our existing wireless bylaw, or other people would call it the cell tower bylaw, was written in uh, 2000 and updated in 2005. Things have changed since then. I want to say when we started working at this, we did contact some, we were lucky enough to have some local knowledgeable people in town, and I'm just going to name Chris Waldo, who helped us out initially with this um, revision. So our current bylaw was shorter than what we're proposing because we were looking for, we're now looking for a measure of more specificity. We've gone through as a planning board, we've gone through two special permit processes for two proposed, well now they're permitted, cell towers. One off of 116 uh, near the Deerfield line and <clears throat> one off of 116 near the Asheville line. You may say, well, where are these cell towers now? Well, they have not been built yet. Mm -hmm. 
we're not sure what the timeline is for them. But in the process of going through negotiating these special permits, we discovered that we had some areas in our existing bylaws that are pretty, not weak, just, just vague, vague, and didn't give us enough oomph in what we might want in terms of um, special permitting in the future. <clears throat> so we are, we are uh, proposing, we are removing some outdated language for example, I'll just give you one outdated language here. Example. Be respond this is this is section C of the existing bylaw. Be responsible for the cost of designing the entire wireless communication infrastructure for the entire town of Conway. This is something that no cell carrier would do. No no cell company is going to do this. It's just impossible. And so having something like this in your existing bylaw means you're always having to figure out a workaround around it. It, it just hangs up the whole process. It's, thanks. Sure. Um, we also were looking to add some specific protections for historic buildings and historic districts, which in our town is basically the village, the center of town. Um, we wanted to ensure uh, that there would be protective screening around proposed facilities rather than asking future planning boards to always remember to like negotiate that with people. We wanted to put it right up front in the bylaw. We also attempted uh, some basic provisions governing what people call uh, small cell or 5G telecommunications facilities, um, <coughs> which, which are likely to be only along public rights of ways. These rely really on density and they're small when they say small cell, they mean they're smaller than an existing cell tower, and they need to be relatively closer together. And we were concerned that they would, because they would be located along streets and roads in densely populated areas, and in Conway that means the village center, that we would want to make sure that people who live down there and people who are down there are, are protected um, visually uh, in, in that way. Um, we also talked about some of the other things that are in this new bylaw are about slope, um, erosion control, things like that, because a lot of proposed cell towers are going to go on top of higher, higher things to reach as many people as possible. Um, and we also uh, put in something to protect a uh, ridge line, the ridge lines. So we could go into more detail, but I'm, I'm going to stop now and just ask Anybody has questions? If there's anything I can explain a little more. Hi. Hi. I'm so Hi. Uh, I'm on zoning board of, board of appeals, and a couple months ago, when the planning board was going through the permitting process for the cell phone tower that was approved on 116, the first thing that occurred to me, and I have to say, you've done a fantastic job of drafting the bylaw. The old bylaw was so brief that it was actually not helpful in dealing with the complexity of, of telecommunications equipment as it exists today. And the first time I read it, I'm reading it and I'm going, how old is this? 2005. <laughs> it's almost 20 years old at this point. And uh, I know the planning board and certainly even zoning to a certain extent, and you had a much more arduous uh, task than we did, kind of struggled with the fact that we had a bylaw that gave us no guidance as to how to um, deal with this issue. And the applicant was very patient, and the public hearings happened, but it probably took longer than it could have because the bylaw wasn't specific enough. So this is not really an example of creating more bureaucracy. It's actually more a matter of creating specificity about a very fundamental technology so that future applicants, and there are going to be future applicants, because everybody wants cell phone, you know, when we moved here, you know, to Conway, the first thing I did when we were looking at properties was pull out my cell phone to see if I get a signal. <laughs> um, I think that's increasingly important to people that want to live here. So I, I'll thanks. just, again, want to take the opportunity and thank you for doing a really great job. Thanks. We, we, we relied on people like Chris. Uh, talk to a lot of different area towns to see what theirs look like. Um, so, and we had a public hearing, got some input. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Hi, Mr. Sure. Waldo. Thank I'm on you. the select board and the capital improvement planning committee. Uh, I want to reiterate that Beth did an amazing job with this. It wasn't just me. No, no, the whole group. <laughs> yeah. So um, I've been working in mobile telecommunications for 25 years for both the military and private sector. Uh, when I saw our initial bylaw for this, it was completely outdated. Uh, the basics of this is that we're putting the power in our hands and not in the carrier carrier's hands. Carrier meaning AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile. Okay. Uh, this way, when a carrier comes and wants to install a new cell site, uh, we have all these restrictions in place to make sure that the beauty of our area is maintained, uh, that there are that there's no noise pollution, light pollution, anything like that. Um, like Beth stated, small cells are a thing. It's something that could come into our town because there are still dark areas, meaning there are still spots where we have no service, especially along 116, um, where there is necessary service for um, you know emergency care. Uh, like Beth stated, these small cells typically go on utility poles. They're typically very small, but there are multiple iterations of them. And we just wanted to make sure that if we do have any installed in our town, nobody notices. So that's what this bylaw is about. And Beth, thank you again for writing this. It's a great write. Well, and I want to probably just say, which is that um, this is an area that uh, there's a lot of um, things that are out of out of town control, and that's because this is an FCC controlled. Um, this is controlled by the federal government in many ways. So there are numbers of things that we cannot stipulate or uh, do or anything. So we're look, we're just you know working what we can, the edges that we can. Any other questions? Yeah. Hi. Okay, I'm Children Fold Road. So I'm just a simple guy. Um, will this help in any way break the Comcast monopoly on our town? No. 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 <laughs> Those are apples and oranges, right? That's, again, that's out of our that's out of our control. This is you know who wants to come who wants to come and provide cell service is basically out of our control. Okay. So this won't advance broadband beyond what Comcast is doing anyway. Um, broadband is, well, help me here with the broadband uh, guy. Well, <laughs> there, there is a monopoly. Bob Armstrong's Hi. <laughs> it's a different thing. There are folks in town now that are getting their broadband service through Elon Musk's satellite network. And so, you know, you can certainly pursue that. Um, there is... There is no, no, nobody anywhere is breaking the broadband monopoly of what's called cable. Now, Greenfield <coughs> is building their own broadband system in the town of Greenfield, competing with Comcast. I don't think that we're about to do that. Um, I, I just didn't uh, realize it was apples and oranges. Yeah, so yeah. yeah. There are folks in town that get their service still through DSL. And you, if you live right near the center of town, you could call up Verizon and talk to them. Um, there are folks in town that live near Orchard Equipment where there are transmitters up on the water tower yeah. and they got their their broadband service. They could watch Netflix videos through their AT&T wireless that's on the top of Orchard Equipment. But if what you're talking about is real broadband, no, there is, uh, so this is, thank you. I'm sorry. Yes, our legal counsel looked at this. Yes. Well, she she certainly reviewed the warrant. I'm yeah. assuming. Yes. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. More on this at town meeting. More on this at town meeting. I'll be there. Thank you. Thank you, Beth. <laughs> okay, in this time I took a run over to the checks and look for a next one because I can't believe we're going to do a fourth one.
It's never happened before, yes. What? But this is really a more toward you. I was just wondering, I know there are a lot of new people in town, and since we seem to have the luxury of time tonight, I wonder if any of them are here and would like to introduce themselves. Yes. It's just a thought. It's. I, I think that's that's great, Bob, because I have new neighbors who are here tonight oh. in the old Tony Borden farm. Oh. Yeah. Hey. And, uh, nice. If you guys would like to get up and introduce yourself, that's really wonderful. Hi. I'm Mike Hams. This is Michelle Vertek, my wife, and uh, uh, we and our four kids. <laughs> pleased and we feel absolute joy to have Tony's old farm on uh, uh, 234 Main Colin Road. So I uh, love to be here, and the kids love the school, and it's been wonderful so far. Where did you come from? Well, I was born in Pennsylvania, but we were living in California for like the last 12 years. And, uh, How are your neighbors? Very <laughs> 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 noisy. <laughs> we're really in town. <laughs> I want to thank Ken for sending Chris over today to fix our water. <laughs> so that's so my house well. first. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for being here. When somebody who's been here as long as Tony has and has been as wonderful a man, you can't help but as being somebody in the neighborhood to wonder. And I'm telling you, he couldn't have picked better people. And I, I not saying that just because you're coming to my house for a badminton tournament on <laughs> Thursday night with the kids, but, but you've been wonderful and, and it's wonderful to have you here and believe me, the neighborhood feels the same way. So you never get two aces in a row. Jimmy, there's another newer couple. Please, Jen. please. Anybody else? Okay. Peter. I'm sorry, not Peter. Nelson. Nelson. Shivlet, Children Falls Road, and I just would like to make a comment about seeing new faces here tonight, and perhaps many new faces at town meeting. Last year, uh, Thad Bennett and I initiated an effort to uh, increase attendance at town meeting. And actually, increase attendance and involvement in town government all the way around. And with the support of the select board, and particularly Verity and all the help, uh, this has now become a town endeavor. So the town meeting light, Warren light, which was Erica's idea as part of that process, I think you, uh, people will be getting postcards in the mail. You saw uh, advertising or promotion in Conway Currents and so on. And uh, there was even, did anybody take advantage of uh, child care this evening? No. Was available. I spoke with Kristen and she didn't have any takers yeah. for tonight. So there's going to be child care available uh, at town meeting this year, as there was last year. Yep. So I guess I'd just like to ask everybody here to encourage their neighbors, people who maybe have lived here in town for a long time but not participated, uh, new people in town, get as many people as possible you know, to attend town meeting and become involved. If anyone hasn't registered to vote, there's still time to do that, right? Yeah, they have yes. until uh, Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday at 8 p.m. is the cutoff. Right. Well, it's a very simple process. So yeah, my office will be open until. Yeah. So spread the word. Yeah. Regarding the child Thank care, so, um, I saw there was a deadline for asking. I think it was May 15th. Yeah. No, that's it's been extended. extended. Oh, it has. Yeah. Yeah. Extended till this oh, Friday. Okay. Great. Oh. We might take it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Child care. Oh, for During town meeting. Anybody else? 
Okay, we got a little time, so this is the next article. Article 10, to see if the town will vote to transfer $80,000 from the capital stabilization <laughs> fund for the purchase of a plow truck, a one-ton four-door short bed, six-cylinder diesel with a new V-plow, or take any action relative <laughs> thereto. This is also something that needs a two-thirds majority vote. Anybody? Uh, what year is the truck that is we're replacing? 2014. 2014. And it's not a replacement. It's not a replacement. It's a question. Additional truck or replacement? What's that? Are you adding a new truck or yes. replacing an old truck? Well, I donated a truck so we wouldn't have to drive around in our large trucks. And it's to a new truck to replace the pickup, but the pickup is staying. <laughs> it's a backup. It'll end up being a backup snowplow truck. Um, it's a truck that we need. The truck I donated is not that great. It's <laughs> very rusty now. And, but it's done when it was intended to do. Um, it got me through two years, or it will be two years. Can I ask how many plows we have right now? How many trucks that have plow attachments do we have in town? Four, five, six. We have six now. Any one of seven? Okay. Well, you, well, you have to understand one thing. Four of the trucks are CDL trucks, and we only have three drivers. Well, four with me. That's with not a requirement for the highway department? What? To have a CDL license? Not for certain jobs. Well, for buying a truck, because we don't have a truck that the people that work there can drive to plow snow. We can address that. Phyllis Crane, Capital Improvements Chair. We had numerous meetings at Capital Improvements that discussed this. And the fact of the matter is, is and we even discussed the town paying to train drivers to be CDL certified. The fact of the matter is, they will get that certification and they will find a job in a higher paying town. So part of the strategy is to, not, is to enable them to operate equipment that does not require a CDL certification. Mm -hmm. Can we get rid of the trucks that they can't use? Can we just trade those in towards something that they can drive? That is even more complicated than what's being proposed because that's going to involve assessments regarding trade-ins and a level of complexity that the town isn't resourced in the highway department to be able to manage. We actually have three of the CDL trucks, are, uh, three of them are new. The fourth one was, is a, a um, spare truck. So when we have issues, and everybody, well, I don't know if everybody knows this, but with new equipment, you never know when you're gonna have an issue. We, we had went through this before with uh, the old seven international that we had years ago that that's why we ended up with a spare truck is because the truck just kept dying on us during a snowstorm or whatever and we were down a truck um, half the time nobody could figure out what was wrong with it we could go back in two hours and start it but besides so we have to be prepared to handle the situations when things don't work the way they're supposed to the, the fourth truck, fourth CDL truck is a 2004 that we have no intentions of replacing until it's time for one of the other trucks to be replaced, which will probably be in another 10 years. Peter Jeswell. Um, Peter Jeswell. Um, you're going to hear me say this again probably at town meeting, but I'll give you the short version now. I've worked on two committees with Ron um, and we successfully built these two buildings at below anybody's cost 
could ever imagine. We're now working on another building which we're going to bring in at a cost that no one could ever possibly imagine. A big part of that is because Ron is smart, mm -hmm. he's resourceful, he's got the best interest of Conway at heart, and he's a penny pincher. <laughs> Believe it or not, he's a penny pincher. I've made a couple of suggestions, wanted to spend money up here, and he, he said, you know, we can, we can do it better. We can, we can come in at lower cost. So, um, I'll, that, I'll, I'll, I'll stop there. I have a longer version of this, which I will share at town meeting, but I, I know where Ron's heart and his mind is, and it's doing the best for Congress. John Crane, 320 Main Road, uh, Finance Committee. We had many meetings about all of these capital equipment requests, and Ron was able to answer all of our questions about the, and address the need for these pieces of equipment. So I think between the select board and the finance committee and the capital improvements committee, we all felt that, that this request was a, was a well-justified request on Ron's part. And um, I'd say if, if anybody can find value in a 120,000-mile, you know, 10-year-old pickup truck, uh, Ron's still trying to find value in that as a backup vehicle for the town. So rather than try to get a couple of hundred or thousand dollars out of it, it'll have more value as a, as a backup. Anybody else? All right. I'm going to use my moderator powers right now. <laughs> Which, for good. Yeah. For good. Yeah. For good. I'm going to suggest that with 20 minutes left, we have a dessert social. <laughs> In honor of Mary McClintock, the originator of this who couldn't be here tonight. Because I'm going to be honest, after four issues, I don't see anything marked here that at this point in my life even seems like a hot button issue. So, if you would like, you would like to say something, I will give you the floor. I'm wondering, um, I heard a rumor that the transfer station is changing from the permit to a pay by bag. Yes. I just was wondering if while we were here, if somebody could speak to that. Oh, is that, is that an appeal? I see a volunteer <laughs> in my eyes right now. Chris Waldo. Hello. Chris Waldo, Orchard Street, Select Board, and Capital Improvement uh, Planning Committee, and I'm always at the transfer station. Um, so, yes, there is going to be a change. Uh, there will be a period between the current way things are done and uh, uh, when this change gets implemented. October 7th. Was that? October 7th. Yes, October 7th. Um, currently, <coughs> the way it works is you get a, for our newcomers, who won't believe this, uh, you get a, ten, for $10, you get a car decal and you can throw away as much trash as you want whenever you want for ten dollars okay a year a year right used to be one dollar and what is deerfield charge uh deerfield charges i believe 65. Yeah. and it's and it's also pay as you throw yes so it's like Yes, yes. It is paid. Right, Zero. right. So you pay the, the decal fee and then you still have to you pay have to, buy the bags. To, to buy the bags to throw stuff in. We didn't want to do that. We didn't want to shock everybody. But the, the nature of it is that trash is costing more and more and more to dump. Um, also, what we found through uh, you know a lot of research is that by capita, our town is throwing away more than most towns around us. And if you know our town, everyone in our town is very conscious of the environment. So I don't think that was the case. <laughs> and what we think was happening was that since our town is the cheapest of any town around our area, is that friends and family members were bringing their trash here and dumping it away. So what we're gonna do is to get a new decal you're going to have to prove your residency by either showing your um, car registration or you know, utility bill, something like that. You'll get the decal for $20. 
And then with that decal, you will also get 104 trash stickers. So, yeah, free stickers. So what you have to do with these stickers is when you're throwing away bags, based on the size of the bag, how many stickers you have to, uh, to, to give the transfer station or put on the bag. So a regular, yep. These are sort of what the stickers gonna be look, look like here. This is four stickers. That's four stickers, slap them on the bag. So a typical like uh, kitchen bag or um, trash bag would be one sticker. If you had um, a, a contractor bag, it would be two stickers. Uh, if you had two small kitchen bags, one sticker. The equivalent of 33 gallons is one sticker. 33 to 35 gallons. Right. Um, so what that means is that you could throw away two large bags a week and never run out of stickers. If you need more stickers, it's a dollar per sticker, you pay more for it. The idea behind this is to stop trash coming from outside of our town. It is also to reduce waste for each person and so everybody is more aware to recycle when you can recycle and to not consume so much to where you're throwing away so much, right? And a compost. We have a compost, right. compost. compost. Yeah. Yeah. Um, If we lower the amount of trash that is going into the transfer station, we lower the cost of the transfer station. So it's pretty self-explanatory. What's the cost now? Of the transfer station? Yeah. It exceeds 100000 Compared to what we take in. What it, we pay, what it exceeds 100000 It's $10 a sticker. Or I'm sorry, ten dollars a decal, and we have what a thousand decals. Ten thousand dollars. Hundred thousand versus ten thousand. Yeah. Just just to be clear, the total budget is just shy of two hundred thousand. But the hundred thousand we're using is the cost to haul and tip the trash, the recycling, the bulky, the scrap metal. So you're removing wages. Yeah. Just for the actual trash. So we also had two public hearings on this, which I believe were recorded by FCAT, and those are available, so I encourage anyone to go and watch both or either of those public hearings where a lot of this was covered. It's a real great presentation. There is a PowerPoint. But, yes. Oh, <laughs> PowerPoint was really good. Thanks. I saw I had the email. Yeah. 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 Chris did a lot of math. Like, it was, uh, yeah. And I also ask that we please, please, please have patience with our transportation attendees. They do a great job up there. Uh, you know, when you have changes like this, it's not easy. Um, I will try to be up there when I can, when the implementation actually happens to help, out, help them out. But uh, please do your part as well and show up there. I'll be retired by then. I'll give you my blackjack. Yeah. <laughs> May I have your gun too? Oh, <laughs> wait, unless, unless. Chris, can I ask you a question? Yes. Oh, well, can you yes. identify yourself? Have you resolved the problem of putting shredded paper into the trash? Because that yes. we've been told you can't put it into the paper, you have to put it in the trash. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Um, really? Yes. Yes. Um, so actually, um, yes, you cannot put it into the recycling, and I can tell everybody why if you're interested. It's basically because when the bags break apart, it rains down like confetti in the place that's trying to recycle it. There's oh. just no way to recycle it properly. But shredded paper. Shredded paper. Oh. That's what I mean, yeah. But we've so, not been allowed to that's put correct. it in with the shredded paper. Right, so you can't put it into the paper compactor anymore. Um, it does compost, so sometimes you know people have been allowed to put it with compost. But I would try to find some other way, honestly, to, to deal with it rather than, you don't want to put it in the trash because, yeah. You know, so, it's paper. I'm sorry? It's, it's paper. It's paper, right. Right. Paper. Right. So I assume you do home shredding because I, I know that, you know. Well, we do it at the shop as well. Oh, okay. You got to be shredding at home. Yeah. Trying to get rid of old stuff. I'm aging here. You're going to get rid of it all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And do, sometimes there are shredding services that come through and they do recycle the shredded paper. Yeah. I've gone to state with it, some of it. Yeah. yeah. I was wondering if I could do it here in town. Yeah. Unfortunately, we can't recycle it here in town. That's, that's the problem. Sorry. I wish we could. Anybody else? Good fire starter. Peter? I have a. Uh, Peter, I saw your hand. Uh, I'll get to you on no the problem. A transfer uh, related question. I noticed we can't recycle plastic bags anymore. Is, yeah. is that going to change? I've been saving a lot of plastic bags. <laughs> <laughs> I never actually. 
So th this, I, and I know it's very frustrating with that as well. The, the reason the program ended really is because unfortunately, um, people have to, a, a couple of bad apples can spoil the program for everybody. Uh, the way plastic bag recycling happens is that you know, all these empty bags get put together and they get compacted through both pressure and a little bit of heat and then they're formed into tracks and other kinds of composite plastic furniture. And if people leave labels in the bags, if they keep their banana peels in there, if they don't empty them out, um, then honestly it just kind of ruins the process. You can't, the people at the other end are not gonna be sitting there opening up every bag and taking up the peanut butter that got stuck to it or whatever. So the problem was, it was they were coming in with so much trash that, because um, I don't know if you all remember, a few years back I was trying to do the bag share program and having people bring in their feed and seed bags and I was making actual shopping bags out of them. <laughs> and I had to stop that because people kept leaving their trash in them. <laughs> and I was storing these in my house and they got rats and they said, you know what, I'm sorry, but I'm done with the program. <laughs> so that's why I went away. But during COVID, um, a lot of the stores like Stop and Shop had stopped taking back the plastic bags, but they're still, they're taking them again now that COVID's, you know. Um, so you can still find them at big wide stop and shop in other places where you can recycle your regular plastic bags. But, but only those bags that like are shopping bags from the stores or all of your plastic bags like your Ziploc bags? And all yeah, so I know and it's very confusing because there's a lot of different kinds of plastic bags. So the Franklin County Solid Waste Management District um, website has some great information. I hope I've posted it on the ours. If I haven't, I'll get to it. Um, but it explains all the different kinds of plastic bags. By and large, if it's a plastic bag that you can put your hand in and it stretches, yeah. that pretty much fits the bill. But there's a lot of different kinds of plastics. So if it crackles or it breaks, that's not recycled. You're at your hand. Yeah, Katie McDonough, with the changes at the transfer station, what's going to happen with both these? We, so we want we want to go in phases. This is the first phase. Okay. Um, we'll get to bulky waste. I, we're doing a per item cost um, that is not being implemented during this phase, um, but we will get to bulky waste. There is a charge for mattresses. You should know that by now. Oh so. yeah, Bill. So Bill Cantor, Real Street. Blackboard. So just to sort of give an overview of this too, just, uh, you know, the reason, um, it's not just that the town's losing 100000 or spending $100,000 a year on this. It's the inequity. That, w when you look at it, and it, it's, it's those of us that are $10 for the, for the windshield sticker right now, and everything else is just out of general taxation. And we're actually subsidizing those real heavy trash producers and there's not that many of them. And so what, what we, what, so th this policy is, is, was number one about reducing the costs, um, and number two about reducing the inequities involved, that, that, we, that it's not fair right now for all of us, especially the seniors and everybody else that are such low trash producers to be subsidizing in the way that we are now, the, 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 the four or five dozen um, families that are very large trash producers and so this is a way that we our projections are that will save some tens of thousands of dollars and that will and, but that depends on how much we're able to reduce the amount of trash that we generate as a town but at most importantly I think that the burden of that of the cost is going to shift to those larger uh, generators of trash and we think that's the fairest way to do this and that, that as you can just see from some of these questions, this is a way more complicated set of issues than you would just think at first blush. Um, but uh, we decided to tackle this and this is the best ideas that we could come up with. And it's a lot of hard work from a lot of people to make this happen. Hi, sorry, I, I figured I should also probably just let you know that the way in which you will obtain your car decal will be changing as well. So there's a couple of big changes on the horizon. Um, so we will they will no longer be sold at the transfer station. They will only be sold at the town offices, not at town hall, so please don't go see Lori. Um, <laughs> but the four of us in the town offices will be doing this, and 
the way we're going to tie this year, the, the decal that goes on your car is going to, we're going to write down the license plate number on the decal. And this is just really for us to keep track of number one, making sure that we have to show your registration, your vehicle registration. So we prove that the car is either from Conway or if you have an out of state registration, you show us where you live and give us proof of that so that we know that every car that's getting the decal is definitely from Conway. And we also have to keep track of it so that we know that, because people get multiple decals, right? Some households have two or more people who do different cars to go to the transfer station. So we have to also keep track of it to make sure that households don't get an extra 104 free stickers <laughs> because they bought a second car decal. So I just wanted to let you know that. So it's going to be done at the town offices. You can come in and do it. If you can't come in during our open hours, you can drop off. I'll have an application form eventually online. You can drop it off um, in the drop box that's now convenient. Hopefully everybody knows about the drop box at, at the town offices. Um, and you can also do it via mail. Um, and you can still pay for it online, but in order to get your decal and your stickers, you're still going to have to come in and see us. So just wanted to give everybody a heads up. It's going to be a slightly different process. <laughs> Jimmy, can I tell you one more thing? <laughs> I don't know. I can stop you, Bob. <laughs> I, I don't want to take time from the social. Uh, but I'm bothered by the tenor that makes it sound like we have a number of families in town that are abusing our trash policy. And, and, and I don't think that's the case. And what I think is that when your mother in Deerfield is cleaning out her house, <laughs> It's really easy to say, man, I, man, Conway is so great. I pay my 10 bucks a year and I can throw out as much as I want. I don't know how they do it, but it's, you know, Conway has magic. And so you take all the crap that was in her basement and you bring it up and you throw it into our dumpster. And people just don't realize that, that you're paying $100,000 in all of our taxes in order to support that magic. It's not magic. And so every other town, we are the only town that doesn't do pay for throw. We're the only one. And, and the, the, the people who run the solid waste management program, they say, you guys have to do this to protect yourself. You should, you should just not be the odd town out. Make it, I mean, I don't know if you remember, but we used to charge a dollar for that decal on the car. And it was a decal stuck on your window and you would look at the price of used cars from Conway that had the decal and they got more money because people were bringing their tracks to Conway in the, with that decal. And, and so, so it was a dollar forever. It was a dollar forever. It wasn't per year. It was a dollar forever. That's right. So, the, so I don't like the idea that there's some bad people in Conway that are abusing this you know, you do a favor for your brother or your friend who has a bunch of more trash than they normally would, and they only have their two bags a week down in Deerfield, and they say, man, you know, I, I'll take your trash to come. Right. With that, I want to close this thing down. Thank you, FCAT, for being here. And... Let's enjoy some desserts and fruit. Ruth Hartle, member of this organizing triad. Um, may, as Mary McClintock would have said, please, for heaven's sakes, eat more stuff. <laughs> Everybody who brought stuff, if there's if there's anything left in on your plate when you leave, please take it with you. And, Lacking that, we'll have to give all of it to the highway department for snacks. Well, they're yes. looking pretty thin. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jimmy.